Look, I want you to know that if you ask me to build your dream bike, I will, okay? There's no need to bother me every single year about it. Jeremy's Crank Ford Urban Cargo Bike Build. So regular viewers will realise I spent the last two years moving factory to regional Victoria. Now I've got a confession to make. There was one that got away. One build that slipped through the cracks. I couldn't quite get my head around it and it dragged on and on and on. This bike has been on the books for nearly, nearly two years now. I'm so embarrassed to say. And we finally clicked it through in the last week or so. And uh, I'm now going to spend the rest of the video both showing you the build and justifying why it took so long. So this is my first interaction with what's commonly called a crank forward bike. Crank forward meaning the crank set is ahead of the saddle. The great thing about these bikes is that you have a low standover height and a comfortable seat position, meaning they're great for city riding and uh, short journeys where you need to put your head up. My first Roto Valo dealer in California, Nando Holtz offered me a ride of this bike while I was there and I have to say that until I'd ridden this bike I didn't really get what this was all about and I probably wouldn't have been able to do this build for Jeremy. Now I originally agreed to this build because it was a really cool concept. Jeremy came to me wanting the best of two bicycles. Uh, he wanted a crank forward design as well as racks so he wanted to combine the riding position of the Rand's Dynamic crank forward bike with its really cool saddle, which you can see here. And he also wanted to use the step through design and the rack design from the Work Cycles freight bike. This seemed like a pretty good uh, combination to me and I didn't see anything like it, which, which is where we fire up the custom wagon. So like so many custom projects, the devil is in the detail. Now while a city crank forward bike is not actually that complicated a bike structurally or mechanically, it's actually quite interesting in scale and this became an exercise in understanding scale and understanding size in order to get this bike right. If I made it too big it would be too much of a truck of a cargo bike and wouldn't serve as its city commuter function. If I made it too compact it wouldn't actually hold enough on it to be a cargo bike. So I ended up having to do quite an extensive design study into other things similar to it, as including the uh, Rand's Dynamic, which Jeremy gave me as a scaler, in order to figure out exactly the right size and the right placement of things on this bike. Now this left me with, the, I guess, the bicycle builder's equivalent of artist's block several times, or rider's block several times through this build, where suddenly things didn't make sense and I didn't want to con continue any further until I did which meant often this bike got pushed aside uh, to the side of the workshop, still in eye shot, in the hope that I would get the answer like I normally do. That unfortunately meant that it dragged out quite a long time while I was still trying to iron out these problems. And there was a bite the bullet moment where I thought it's not gonna make any more sense uh, than it is now, so it was time to get on with it. Speaking of get on with it, let's kick on with the build montage. So I hope you dig this build, we certainly did. It's great to get over the line. Nice, fun, cruisy bike, but also a tool for a job, which is extra special. Uh, this is not the first slack geometry cruisier bike I've built. Uh, I also built this bike here for the Melbourne Custom Bike Show a few years ago, and you can check out the build of that in the uh, channel somewhere. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other builds, both here on YouTube and also in the blog on our website. 
Cheers.